I've chosen to use the readings for the Harvest Thanksgiving, which is the alternative set of readings for Sunday the 8th of October. I've been Archdeacon of West Ham for 16 years, which feels incredible. But it might be that the most important thing I've learned during that time was taught to me by a Kenyan who was visiting this country as part of our links with his country. He just arrived and so, as you do, I offered him a drink. He asked for water, so I filled a glass with tap water. But when I gave it to him, he held it up and gave the most heartfelt prayer of thanks I've ever heard. It wasn't a cursory grace, such as you might have learned at school, but a deep expression of thankfulness to God from a man who, in material terms, had far less than me. That challenged me. Am I thankful for what I have? Or am I like most people in this country, apparently, and think that if only if I had another £10,000 a year, I'd be OK? Because in truth, I have enough to eat, to buy clothes, to keep warm in winter, and to enjoy life. And yet, like most people, I worry about rising bills. I don't spend money on things I would like to spend it on. I don't have a season ticket at West Ham, for example. And although I have a perfectly good car and a motorbike or two, I find myself looking at adverts and coveting a better car or another motorbike. A lack of thankfulness can come from a sense that what we have, we've earned by our own hard work, like the self-made man who worships his creator. So our readings today are a helpful, from, helpful reminder that all we have comes from God. In our reading from Deuteronomy, the people of Israel are warned not to forget God when they come into their promised land. Don't say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have given me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God. All things come from him, and when we acknowledge that, it changes our attitude to what we have in life. Some of you will remember an old song, rarely sung these days, Count your blessings, name them one by one. You know, that's not a bad thing to do each day as you pray to acknowledge all your blessings one by one and to ask the Holy Spirit to give you a thankful heart. When we do that, it has an interesting effect because when we really start to understand God's generosity to us, seen not only in what we have, but in the life and teachings of Jesus Christ and in his death and resurrection. It is natural to start to reflect that in our attitudes to other people. As we read about the values of the kingdom of God in the Bible, we may need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us take on those values more and more, so that in our lives and our actions, we express God's concern for justice and mercy and what one famous cricketing bishop called God's bias to the poor. When we start to reflect God's generosity in our own attitudes to money, it doesn't only benefit those to whom we are generous, it frees us from the hold that material possessions have on us. So be thankful and be generous. And finally, don't worry. I'm encountering a lot of anxiety amongst the people I've been meeting recently, and that's understandable, given all the pressures and uncertainties that we're living with. But Jesus tells us not to worry, not to let anxiety dominate our thoughts. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life, he says. That's not to say that we should be irresponsible or not bothered. No doubt you're a conscientious person, but that's not the same as worrying. There will be difficult times in anyone's life. I'm mindful of the drought that our friends in Kenya have endured for these past four years. And it might be that you're watching thinking, I've lost my job, or I'm ill, or how am I going to pay my bills this winter? As many of you watching this will know, I'm undergoing chemotherapy for lymphoma, which is a kind of blood cancer. That's why I've lost my flowing locks and my manly beard. It has been tough at times, and the outcome of my treatment is not guaranteed. But I'm not sitting here racked with anxiety. I'm reminded of Job, who in the face of much greater troubles, 
was able to declare, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And of Habakkuk, who could say, even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vine, even though the olive, cree, olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Jesus says, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And in Philippians 4, Paul picks up the theme, don't be anxious about anything. In fact, to give the full quote, he writes, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, dear friends, be thankful for all that God has given you. Be generous with all that God has given you. And don't worry, don't be anxious about anything. Because, as I learned from another Kenyan brother, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Amen. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is live and, and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.